ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम थर्ड कैंटो सिक्सटीन चैप्टर एंड टाइटल द टू डोर कीपर्स ऑफ वैकुंठा जया एंड विजया कर्स्ड बाय द सेजेस टेक्स्ट नंबर सेवन यत्सेवया चरण पद्म पवित्र रेणु सद्यक्षताखिलमल प्रतिलब्धशील न श्रीर्वीरक्तमी मंजहाति येक्षालाथ इतरे निहती ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय ट्रांसलेशन द लॉर्ड कंटिन्यूड बिकॉज आई एम द सर्वीटर ऑफ माय डिवोटीज माय लोटस फीट हैव बिकम सो सेक्रेड दैट दे इमीडिएटली वाइप आउट ऑल सिन एंड आई हैव एक्वायर्ड सच अ डिस्पोजिशन दैट द गॉडेस ऑफ फॉर्चून डज नॉट लीव मी इवन दो आई हैव नो अटैचमेंट फॉर हर एंड अदर्स प्रेज हर ब्यूटी एंड ऑब्जर्व सेक्रेड वाउस to secure from her even a slight favor purport by shila prabhupad the relationship between the lord and his devotee is transcendently beautiful as the devotee thinks that it is due to being a devotee of the lord that he is elevated in all good qualities so the lord also thinks that it is because of his devotion to the servitor that all his transcendental glories have increased in other words as the devotee is always anxious to render service to the lord so the lord is ever anxious to render service to the devotee the lord admits here in that although he certainly has the quality that anyone who receives a slight particle of the dust of his lotus feet becomes at once a great personality this greatness is due to his affection for his devotee it is because of this affection that the goddess of fortune does not leave him and that not only one but many thousands of goddesses of fortune engage in his service in the material world simply to get a little favor from the goddess of fortune people observe many rigid regulations of austerity and penance the lord cannot tolerate any inconvenience on the part of the devotee he is therefore famous as bhakta vatsala the sense the bhakti vedant purport the previous chapter described the kingdom of god bhagavatam is very special that it reveals the con- most confidential knowledge about the supreme lord's personal features and uh, particularly his kingdom vaikuntha loka so we should read and hear and discuss and become attracted to make vaikuntha our next destination at the end of this life and we have to prepare so lord brahma while describing to the devatas the kingdom of god he is telling unfortunate people waste their time in useless activities they never hear about the glories of the lord they never hear about the kingdom of god so unless we hear unless we come to know properly we will never make a plan or a program to transfer ourselves at the end of this life to the kingdom of god that is the goal of human life and in the kingdom of god what is the lord's uh, nature what are the kind of activities he has that is also described here so this chapter describes how two servants of the supreme lord in vaikuntha they were cursed by the four sages the four kumaras so the curse was actually not a curse it was an arrangement of the lord for these two associates to actually participate in the lord's leela on the earth 
now the lord says to the sages that uh, for the supreme lord narayana or vishnu or krishna the brahmana is the highest and most beloved personality and therefore in today's words the lord is telling because i am the servitor of my devotees these brahmanas are not simply caste brahmanas that the supreme lord is speaking about they are actually brahmana vaishnava in the stages of development of krishna consciousness first of all one has to elevate oneself to sattva guna the platform of a brahmana and one has to go further because sattva guna also is binding us in this material world so to actually become free from the gunas including sattva guna after coming to the stage of becoming a brahmana sattva guna one has to progress further to come to the stage of becoming a vaishnava so a brahmana who is learned in the scriptures and who is qualified in brahmanical qualities shamo damo tapas shaucham chantir arjavam evacha jnanam vigyanam astikyam brahma karma subhavam naturally performs brahmanical activities decorated with these qualities such a brahmana is called a brahmana pandit because he is learned in the vedas and his actions are according to the vedic directions meant for brahmana but that is not the end of perfection in human life one has to progress further to become a vaishnava a vaishnava is transcendental to a brahmana even so prabhupad clarifies that such a vaishnava actually is a brahmana vaishnava brahmanical qualities are automatically included in a vaishnava so such a brahmana vaishnava is being referred to as very very uh, dear to the supreme lord that such a brahmana vaishnava is considered by the supreme lord to be the highest and most beloved personality most beloved uh, of the supreme lord and such a uh, brahmana vaishnava is personally served by the supreme lord so therefore uh, the lord is telling because i am the servitor of my devotees my lotus feet have become so sacred pavitram charana padma pavitram because these sacred lotus feet immediately wipe out all sin one becomes free from all sinful reactions or purified of all sins simply by taking the dust of the lotus feet of the supreme lord charana padma pavitra renum and because of the supreme lord serving his devotees the supreme lord is not at all attached to lakshmi goddess of fortune but still the goddess of fortune uh, never leaves the supreme lord always serving the lotus feet of the supreme lord 
her position is very special she is got a position on the chest of the lord but she is attached to serving the lotus feet of the supreme lord and as far as her position is concerned the lord is clarifying in this material world especially other persons like lord brahma and all the devatas and all saintly persons they observe sacred vows to secure from lakshmi even a slight favor because she is full of all auspicious qualities she is the bestower of all kinds of fortune all kinds of fortune so therefore in this material world the top devatas they also uh, want her favor but she is attached to the service of the lotus feet of the supreme lord so proper clarifies in the purport lakshmi sahasra shat samrava se vidyaman so the supreme lord is served not only by one but many thousands of goddesses of fortune so that is the position of the lord and that lord he is very attached to his pure devotees that he himself is always seeking an opportunity to serve the lotus feet of the devotee the devotees are always seeking an opportunity to serve the lotus feet of the lord so the relationship between the lord and his pure devotees is very very intimate very confidential and the lord does not tolerate any inconvenience that somebody may give to the devotee he personally takes charge of completely protecting such pure devotees personally takes charge he supplies all their needs without their even asking for it your devotee is not ask anything from the lord but the lord is always attentive to every single small detail of the devotee so further we will see in the next few verses the lord glorifying his pure devotees not glorifying his today is uh, the initiation ceremony in which uh, devotees will be accepting the shelter and the diksha from sri lam prabhupad we have two kinds of diksha hari naam diksha and gayatri mantra diksha hari naam diksha is the diksha in which the hari krishna mantra is received from the bona fide spiritual master of course uh, chanting hari krishna japa mantra japa or performing hari krishna mantras kirtana is not dependent on whether one is initiated or not initiated that is a mercy of the supreme lord that in his incarnation as the holy name he is ever willing to bless anybody who simply vibrates their tongue and says hare krishna then somebody may say what is the need for initiation if after beginning to chant hare krishna or after coming to know about the glories of hari krishna 
one wants to properly engage in chanting the hari krishna mantra to actually get shelter of the lotus feet of the supreme lord permanent shelter then one has to approach not the supreme lord directly but one has to approach his pure devotee spiritual master so shelter at the lotus feet of the lord permanent shelter is only possible if we approach the supreme lord through his pure devotee so therefore even though chanting hari krishna is not dependent on diksha all the scriptures and all the acharyas explain that anyone desiring to get permanent shelter at krishna's lotus feet has to take diksha from a bona fide spiritual master who is a representative of krishna आचार्यं मां विजानीया न अवमन्येत करहिच वन शुड नेवर बी एनवियस ऑफ ए बोनोफाइड स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर वन शुड ऑफर हिम रिस्पेक्ट इक्वल टू दैट ऑफर टू कृष्णा एंड वन शुड take shelter and serve very sincerely very seriously such a spiritual master one should surrender dedicate oneself completely to the service of such a spiritual master tasmat gurum prapadye ta jignasu shreya uttama one should make inquiries spiritual inquiries from such a spiritual master after surrender inquire from him something the bhagavad gita also krishna explains tad vidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya so pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya three things krishna is telling inquiry with submission surrender and service sevaya only then such a spiritual master who is actually coming in parampara who is a pure devotee of krishna he has uh, two qualifications mentioned in this bhagavad gita verse upadekshanti te gyanam gyaninah tatvadarshinah he is gyaninah he is uh, enriched or full of transcendental knowledge particularly knowledge about krishna so to learn about krishna is possible only if we approach such a spiritual master who is a pure devotee of krishna and who is 100% krishna conscious sent person krishna conscious so such a spiritual master is also tatva darshi he has seen the truth he has seen krishna seen krishna means realized krishna and the symptom of such a realized krishna realized so is that such a spiritual master is always engaged in pure devotional service to krishna 24 hours a day krishna described that also in the bhagavad gita mahatmanas tumam partha daivim prakriti mashritah bhajanti ananya manaso ananya manaso they always render service to krishna without even slight deviation even for one moment 
undeviated devotional service they render. And Srila Prabhupada, he demonstrated this for the whole world out of his compassion for the suffering souls. Prabhupada actually uh, distributed this Krishna consciousness very liberally even to the most uh, fallen, unqualified persons, taking compassion. In the same mood as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also appeared 500 years back to deliver all the fallen souls. Patita Pavana Hetu Tava Avatar. Narottam Das Thakur, one of the Acharyas, is teaching us. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to deliver all fallen souls. Dina Hina Jata Chilo Harina Me Udhahilo. So, even the most fallen, most sinful people, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered by just distributing this Hare Krishna mantra. So, Srila Prabhupada is coming in parampara from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and is distributing this Hare Krishna mantra. So, his followers liberally give out this Hare Krishna mantra to everyone. But among those who receive the Hare Krishna mantra or who come in contact with this movement, Hare Krishna movement of Srila Prabhupada, those who become serious candidates for spiritual life, spiritual advancement, for going back to Godhead, such candidates should take Diksha from Prabhupada. Should take Diksha from And uh, some other devotees here who have already received this Harinam Diksha, they are going to receive the Gayatri Mantra Diksha. In our uh, practice of Krishna Consciousness, we follow uh, two parallel lines of Pancharatrik Vidhi and Bhagavata Vidhi. Even though chanting of Hare Krishna is sufficient for getting the highest perfection of Krishna Prema, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu awards to anybody who chants sincerely. But still, in the neophyte stage, to become serious about chanting, to also maintain the proper internal and external cleanliness required for properly executing devotional service, the Acharyas have given us the Pancharatrik Vidhi, which involves receiving the Gayatri Mantra and chanting this Gayatri Mantra along with following certain uh, procedures for deity worship. So particularly deity worship, it is one of the nine Angas of Bhakti as described in the Bhagavatam. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam. Archanam means deity worship. This deity worship can be performed only by actually those who are pure devotees. Because only pure devotees can approach Krishna even in the deity form. But Narad Muni, out of compassion for the fallen souls of this world, he has given the Pancharatrik taught, the Pancharatrik Vidhi by which even neophytes can worship the deity of Krishna, Radha and Krishna. By accepting this Pancharatrik Diksha. And in Pancharatrik Diksha, there is no consideration of the previous background of the person. Whether one is born in a Brahmana family or one is born in a 
lesser than brahmana family whether one has been sinful or one has been pious simply by chanting hare krishna under instruction of the bona fide spiritual master one can become purified and become eligible to receive the gayatri mantra and follow the panchratik vidhi to worship the deity of the supreme lord according to narad muni's instructions so in our temples particularly we worship the deity according to panchratik vidhi and only those who have receive this pancharatri diksha are allowed to touch the deities and to offer the actual arati and all the other offerings to the deity so uh, devotees in the temple particularly they uh, receive first of all the hari naam diksha by which they become purified and then they qualify after chanting at least the hari krishna mantra under strict instructions of the spiritual master shrila prabhupad after 6 months of chanting they are eligible for receiving the pancharatik diksha the gayatri mantra regarding the gayatri mantra it is said in the bhagavad gita in the 10th chapter 35th verse Gayatri Chandasamaham Krishna is describing his opulences in the material world This Gayatri mantra is also one of the opulences of Krishna in this world what is the opulence of this Gayatri mantra the meaning of this Gayatri Chandasamaham Krishna says of poetry chandas i am the gayatri verse sung daily by the brahmanas so in our vedic culture the brahmanas daily three times a day three sandhya three junction periods of the day they chant this gayatri mantra so shri la prabhupada explains in the purport to this 10.35 verse of the bhagavad gita in sanskrit there are definite rules that regulate poetry rhyme and meter not written whimsically as in much modern poetry chandas according to certain rules the poetry is composed and it's very difficult to compose poetry according to chandas amongst the regulated poetry the gayatri mantra which is chanted by the duly qualified brahmanas is most prominent gayatri mantra itself is in the gayatri chandas that's how the name gayatri mantra so is the gayatri chandas This Gayatri mantra is mentioned in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, the very first verse. Satyam param dhi mahi. So, Lord Vyasa Deva, he has compiled the Shrimad Bhagavatam, and he has invoked the Gayatri mantra in the very first opening verse of the Bhagavatam. So, what is the significance of that? That Sri La Prabhupada explains. because the gayatri mantra is especially meant for god realization especially meant for god realization it represents the supreme lord gayatri mantra is not different from krishna which is what krishna is telling in this verse gayatri chandasamaham so gayatri mantra is not different from krishna This mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. Nowadays in the market they are selling this audio track or CD or whatever of Gayatri mantra being chanted by famous singers or famous uh persons and they encourage everyone you also chant Gayatri mantra it is very powerful mantra. Yes it is very powerful mantra but to chant the mantra and get the spiritual benefit one has to be qualified so prabhupad mentions here it is meant for spiritually advanced people what is a spiritually advanced people mean 
those who have purified themselves by chanting hare krishna mantra they can only chant properly the gayatri mantra to get further spiritual benefit otherwise if one is not spiritually advanced then one is advised to just chant hare krishna just chant hare krishna hare krishna mantra does not require qualification hare krishna mantra is not dependent on qualification but gayatri mantra is only for those who are spiritually advanced others even if they chant they will not get the benefit of chanting gayatri they will not get the benefit any mantra has to be received properly from the right source and then only its chanting will be effective so prabhupad further says uh, when one attains success in chanting this gayatri mantra he can enter into the transcendental position of the lord that means krishna's spiritual personality can only be understood when one attains success in chanting gayatri mantra but by chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy even those who are advanced by chanting hari krishna mantra seriously by properly singing the mantra from the bona fide spiritual master they also can understand the spiritual personality of krishna because krishna reveals in the heart of his devotee tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te tesham evanu kampartham aham magyana jantamaha nashayami atma bhagasto jnana deepena bhasvata krishna is seated in everybody's heart so somebody sincerely chants hare krishna and take shelter of the lotus feet of shri la prabhu pa the bona fide spiritual master your devotee spiritual master and krishna within the heart of such a devotee reveals himself and destroys all ignorance and the devotee becomes enlightened in uh, knowledge of krishna but nevertheless for accelerating our progress in krishna consciousness shila prabhupad has given us also the gayatri mantra gayatri mantra among the different mantras the devotees who receive this gayatri mantra diksha will receive there are varieties of this gayatri mantra there is guru gayatri mantra there is gaura gayatri mantra and there is one gopal mantra and there is one uh, kama gayatri mantra so these are all very very confidential mantras coming down in this particular parampara so proper also says here the gayatri mantra is very important in vedic civilization and is considered to be the sound incarnation of brahman brahma is its initiator brahma received the gayatri mantra first from krishna directly and brahma is giving this gayatri mantra in parampara so we are coming in parampara from brahma therefore our sampradaya is called brahma madhva gaudiya sampradaya so brahma is the initiator and it is passed down from him from brahma in disciplic succession so in this parampara we have received this gayatri mantras and when properly chanted and one engages in deity worship then one's progress in chanting hare krishna is accelerated is accelerated but one should not think that only by chanting gayatri mantra you can make advancement to come to the perfection no even by just chanting hare krishna one can achieve the highest perfection 
provided one chance seriously avoiding the ten offenses and engaging in the service of the bona fide spiritual master in the association of like minded devotees this is important so today we are going to have the initiation ceremony where some devotees will receive this diksha so i'll stop here श्रीमद्भागवत की जय श्रीलभुपाद की जय